You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. And if they miss you with the delivery scams and you're savvy enough to avoid all this, there are people who are stealing packages off your porches. So it's 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 sort of these all these digital landmines that have been built around. It's really diff- becoming difficult for a consumer to navigate through. Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to the Hacking Humans podcast brought to you by the CyberWire. Every week we delve into the world of social engineering scams, phishing plots, and criminal activities that are grabbing headlines and causing significant harm all over the world. I'm Dave Bittner, and joining me is Joe Kerrigan from the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute. Hey, Joe. Hi, Dave. We've got some good stories to share this week. And later in the show, Abhilash Garamella, he is head of research at Bolster. We're talking about a phishing campaign that was targeting customers of the U.S. Postal Service. But first, a word from our sponsors at Know Before. Time travel would be a particularly powerful tool in the hands of any overworked InfoSec professional. Think about it. Being able to see the future and know which malicious emails would be missed by all the existing filters. Your ability to stay one step ahead of the bad actors would rise to a whole new level. Unfortunately, our sponsors haven't cracked time travel just yet. They are, however, introducing a new phishing protection product that can block and remove dangerous phishing emails before your users even see them. Stay with us, and in a few minutes, you'll learn how. All right, Joe, before we jump into our stories here, we have a couple of items of follow-up here. Yeah, two quick items here. Uh, Cyber News has a, has a story on something we talked about way back in episode 272, mm. and that's the uh, ad that you kept seeing get popping up about uh, the the car accident. Yes, So yes. I miss him so much. Yes. yes, that one. So we have a link in the show notes about that, so go check that out. That's from Cyber News. Well, let me just add to that that um, I got an, I got a hot tip from my wife, who ah. is a Facebook group administrator. So she has, she knows uh, how to use Facebook at a much higher level than I do. <laughs> and uh, she made the or suggestion. Me, probably. <laughs> she probably she yeah. made the suggestion uh, within Facebook if you rather than looking at the timeline that it that it uh, provides you with. Look at the feeds. So look at Facebook feeds and then select just a, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the timeline where it's in order of the time that things happen? Chronological. Chron- thank you. Chronological. That's <laughs> the word I'm looking for. <laughs> it's chronological. Uh, set your feed to chronological just from your friends, and that will pretty much do away with that particular scam. Oh. And I tried it, and sure enough, I will do that tonight. It worked. Yeah. I, I, I actually, I don't know if I'll do that tonight because I'm not on Facebook every single day. Yeah. Uh, I have the messenger on my phone and that's pretty much the only reason I still have a Facebook account. Yeah. Uh, is because of messenger. Like I say, every every time we talk about it, it keeps me in touch with family. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Well, the feeds makes it Facebook a much more pleasurable experience, uh, which is um Hardly a compliment, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a lot. Like, hey, it's a yeah. lot better to hit yourself in the thumb with a hammer when you're right. Exactly, to right. right. Rather than a, a you know a, a sledgehammer, just a regular hammer right. is much less painful. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, exactly. A what else we got, Joe? Uh, Mike wrote in to tell us about a breach at a company called Resend. Okay, uh, this is a company that he uses in his development. Uh, they, this is they they offer an API that you can incorporate into your software products that manages email. Okay. Uh, Resend had a breach starting late last year, and they emailed everybody. And Mike sent along a copy of the email yeah. that he received, which is essentially the breach notification. And we'll put a link to this in the show notes. This is how you do breach notification. Oh, okay. It's it's a pretty good uh, pretty good paper. Yeah, I, I'm I'm I, I'm sure that Mike is frustrated that some of his uh, some of his data may have been breached, but. Uh, I, I I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on the fact that that Resend actually put together a pretty good report and made it public on their web page about this breach. Okay, so very good, good stuff. Yeah. well done, Resend. Yeah. Uh, finally, we have uh, an anonymous listener who wrote in with a handful of things. I just want yes. to cover a couple of them here. All right. Um, 
First of all, uh, this person wrote in and said, hey guys, just listen to the episode and have a thought about Michael's SMS scam issue. So this was the, the person who's, uh, whose wife was driving the car and getting on a toll road right. and kept getting an SMS message, a text message saying that, hey, you're on a toll road and, and you need to pay the toll. Right. Right. Uh, so this person writes and says, to me, you guys actually said the answer, ALPR, that's automated license plate readers. Right. My guess is that it may not actually be a scam and may be legit. Michael said that he has e-tag, but it's his wife who had the car. So to me, the state or county has used ALPR and is not correlating the license plate with the paid e-tag. So they see her plate and see that she does not have an e-tag registered to her. A Just my guess. Poorly developed software system being used by a government <laughs> entity. Uh, so hmm. I think this is plausible. It is plausible, yeah. Very plausible. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would agree with this. Um, recently, uh, we switched back to the Maryland e-tag system, which is Easy Pass. Yeah. Uh, when, when I signed up for it, Maryland had a convenience fee of like $5 a month. Okay. Which is... I, I don't like paying a convenience fee for something that costs you less money to do. Okay. Uh, so we had the Delaware Easy Pass, right. which you could sign up for because they didn't have the $5 a month fee. Yeah. And not only am I cheap, but I'm also a little resentful. So <laughs> <laughs> I went ahead and did that. But then um, I decided, Maryland changed the rules a couple of years ago. And I was like, I should really sign up for the Maryland Easy Pass, especially since they give you lower tolls if you're a Maryland resident. Okay. Which is, so if you live in Maryland now, there's no reason not have, in fact, you're foolish if you don't have the uh, Maryland Easy Pass. Yeah. So I signed up for that and, but at the same point in time, my Delaware one had expired. Uh, okay. So the Maryland guys were sending me uh, messages and I said, okay, I'll sign up for the, the Maryland one now. And I said, will my old tolls be applied to my new account? And it took them like three months to work that out. But they kept sending me bills, and I kept saying, no, you're supposed to charge my, my credit card for these uh. because I have an account with you. You know the tag numbers. You have the tag numbers. You know the tag numbers of all my cars. You have, you have all this information. Go ahead and please put it together and, and charge me. Yeah. Took a month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, at least they didn't overcharge you, I guess, right? <laughs> I don't think they did. I don't yeah. know. I don't look at the statements too well. Yeah. Well... You can't fight City Hall, Joe. You can't <laughs> right. fight City Hall. <laughs> Actually, I'll say this. Maryland state government's pretty responsive when you call them up. Yeah, and That's... I have to say, I mean, you know, all the nightmare stories, but most of my interactions with our MVA have actually not been that bad. They've been pretty, pretty good. I mean, uh, that is one thing I'll, I'll disagree with you about. I, I've had miserable experiences at the MVA, especially around here. <laughs> so much so that I go to rural areas of the state to do my MVA business. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, this uh, listener says one more thing. Says uh, on the Facebook ads, this has happened to me before. Uh, this is where you were talking about the pan that you had right. purchased. And... I was talking about the hex clad pan. Right, right. And right. this listener says, I'm willing to guess that you purchased the pan from Amazon and the Amazon account uses the same email address as the Facebook account. So simple tracking sort of. Well, my son actually picked up the, um, the pan. Yeah. And... My wife and I were the ones talking about it. We didn't, I didn't even search the pan or look for it. Mm -hmm. So it was not, it was not that. But the same residence, it was shipped to the same house. My son lives with us. So ah. yeah, it could yeah. be. It, it could yeah. be. They, uh, and the correlate, he's right. The correlation is simple. Right. They know where we all live. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they sure do. They sure do. <laughs> Uh, all right. And this listener follows up and says, uh, I like the show, the banter and what you guys are trying to do. Even if you may say something I disagree with, keep it up and hopefully the show will be around for years to come. What? Well, we may hope say so something well. we disagree with. Dave, <laughs> he should not disagree with anything we ever say. He must be talking about me, Joe. Okay. Because obviously no one could ever disagree with anything that you say. So everybody should disagree <laughs> with what I just said, by the way. <laughs> All right. Nobody should 100% agree with anybody else. Okay. That's my enough. opinion. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, all right. So, again, thank you all for writing in. We do appreciate it. And yep. you can send us a message. It's hackinghumans at n2k.com. All right. Let's move on to our stories here. Uh, I have a story from the folks over at uh, ProPublica. And uh, this is an article titled, How Walmart's Financial Services Became a Fraud Magnet. Hmm. Something at Walmart being suboptimal, Joe. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. Shocked. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't like Walmart. 
Yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I think that's a pretty common uh, thing. I don't, I, I think most people, like, I think most people don't shop at Walmart because they choose to shop at Walmart. Like, Walmart is where you shop uh, if you have no other options. Right. <laughs> right. Either because, I mean, to, to, to Walmart's uh, defense, Walmart is very inexpensive. They are. They, and they do have good pricing. Right. Some of the ways they achieve that may not be the most ethical. So you get a lot for your money at Walmart. Yes. Um, but, you know, it, it can also be... Uh, to me, uh, I have trouble with the chaos that is Walmart. It, I get, it makes me anxious being in a Walmart because of how messy it is and just the, the kind of activity that's going on there. The way it's organized is just not great for me. But I, right. I, you know, it's not to say I never shop there, but uh, if I have the option of shopping elsewhere... I do. I like, Yeah, <laughs> like where you and I live, there's a Target nearby the Walmart. And Correct. I will go to the Target, and only if the Target does not have what I need will I then... <laughs> Also, Amazon doesn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, there, you know, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, this story uh, starts out talking about uh, someone named Christy Brown, who's a retired teacher in New York, uh, who was deceived way back in February of 2020 by a scammer who was claiming to be from the FBI hmm. and was telling her that drug traffickers were using her social security number. Uh, in a roundabout way, you know, the ways that we describe here all the time. Right. She was directed to buy $2,000 in Walmart gift cards and share the details, which was going to help the FBI crack the case. Well, of course, it turns out that uh, it was a scammer. Of course. And the scammer sold the gift card details to another scammer, someone named um, Kinbon Chen, who was hmm. a Chinese national who was living in Virginia, who then use those gift cards to buy other gift cards, which is interesting, right? So you got your Walmart gift cards, and then you turn around and you buy Apple gift cards or right. any other brand. So now you've effectively laundered the money because now okay. you're two gift, card, two gift cards deep into this. Right. Yeah, and there's probably no relationship between the, the, the gift card numbers. Correct. So no traceable relationship. It's almost like cash. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So uh, this person's operation, uh, Mr. Chen's operation, uh, which ultimately involves reselling the gift card to folks in China uh, because um, U.S. gift cards are a hot commodity in China because it's ways to get around some of the, um, you know, restrictions on money and, and uh, surveillance and so on and so forth in China— uh, this person laundered about seven million dollars. Seven involving... million dollars. One guy laundering seven million dollars. Yeah, uh, this article uh, goes uh, talks about how basically um, they had um, the equivalent of in-store money mules who would sit there and wait for the gift card numbers to come in, and then go and buy other gift cards, and they would use the. Um, the automated kiosks to do it, you know. In other words, probably the, the Walmart app as well. Well, they yeah they they use the line you know the 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 line at the store where there isn't uh, someone checking you out. Right. Yeah. You know, the kiosk. It's unsupervised. Right. Exactly. So there's nobody to go. This is kind of funny. Well, and what's interesting about that to me is that I know a lot of stores you can't buy a gift card through the kiosk. You have to go through the line huh. to do it. But that's, evidently that's not the case in Walmart, at least or at least it wasn't when this was all happening. Right. Um the Department of Justice uh was on to this. In fact, they referred to the case as the Walmart scheme. Ah. Um and the the DOJ has claimed that Walmart had insufficient anti-fraud measures. Uh, and they were resistant to stricter enforcement, and that helped facilitate this fraud. Um, they, the DOJ claims that uh, Walmart um, had routed over a billion dollars in fraud losses uh, in about a decade between 2013 and 2022. Really? Yeah. And, you know, Walmart makes, this article points out that Walmart makes big money off of all of this. Right. They get a cut of every uh, gift card sold. Sure. Um, they get a cut of uh, wire transfers, which is big business at Walmart. So you know, they've made hundreds of thousands of dollars. Facilitating cybercrime, essentially. Facilitating, facilitating cybercrime. So the, uh, the FTC alleges, in fact, they sued Walmart in 2022, mm. uh, alleging that Walmart had allowed these fraudsters to exploit their money transfer service. Mm. 
Um, Walmart uh, likes the financial services line of business. In fact, they bought an online banking platform in 2022. Um, ultimately, this person, Mr. Chen, uh, he ran his scheme for five years and he was arrested in 2021. He had a trial back in September and he was convicted on multiple charges and he, he will be in prison for quite a while. Okay. Um, the original victim, uh, Christy Brown, who we mentioned, she lost $2,000. Of course, beyond that, there was the uh, emotional distress of everything that she went through. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to point out, if if Christy Brown hears this, $2,000 is getting off pretty cheap in one of these scams. Yeah. I know it's a lot of money, and I'm, I don't mean to diminish it, but breathe a sigh of relief there. There are people who lose tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars to these kind of things. Yeah. Um, still, <laughs> still, two thousand dollars. Nothing grand. to sneeze at. If I lost no. two thousand dollars, I'd be livid. Yeah. Uh, again, we we hear somebody coming forward and talking about it, which is great. Yeah. So thank you, Christy Brown, for that. Uh, that's courageous, and and I and in no way, and there are a lot of people who don't come forward and say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just go, well, I should, I guess I'll take that as a lesson, and they go on. But by sitting here and telling your story, um, you you. Make it public, and everybody else now knows about it. Yeah, this article points out that that Walmart is, um, uh, I guess, the way to describe it is being kind of two faced in their yeah, duplicitous. Duplicitous. Thank you. That is a, a much more expensive word than the I, one I chose. Joe, the uh, human thesaurus. Today. <laughs> so Walmart, uh, in their public statements, they of course point out that they uh, are trying to stop this sort of fraud. Uh, and also, they point out that through their financial services, that they have saved their customers millions and millions of dollars over the years. And I think there's something to that in that you know Walmart has these um, centers where you can do uh, cash transfers and so on and so forth. There are Walmarts that have, I think they call them Wal- Walmart money centers. Really? Um, yeah. And you can like use Walmart like Western Union? Exactly. Really? Exactly. And they do it at a much lower cost than any of their competitors. Hmm. Uh, and so Walmart will say that in doing that and providing a cheaper alternative for folks, that they are helping them and saving them lots of money, which yep. is true. Yep. Um, but this article points out that uh, behind the scenes that Walmart has been very uh, strident in their lobbying to try to uh, stop efforts for uh, protection against third-party criminal conduct. Huh. And also basically blaming the victims. It's saying that it's not Walmart's fault that these people are falling for fraudsters, um, that people should know better. And uh, it's basically not Walmart's problem. Yeah, that- start finding them. Make it Walmart's problem. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know. So the bottom line here is, you know, there's some pretty deep systemic issues uh, and Walmart seems to be taking a kind of casual approach to it, or at least that's the case that this article makes, um, saying that they have inadequate employee training and that um, they're loose with the compliance. You know, even the things that they said they would do with the FT. For example, um, after their... um, Actually, I think it was back in 2018, this article points out that Walmart made an agreement with the FTC, kind of a, um, uh, uh, they weren't ordered to do so, but they made an agreement that they would make it so that you could no longer buy gift cards with gift cards. Okay. And, and had they done that, that then would this, have stopped this entire racket. Right. This racket, would this this form of money laundering would not be possible. That's correct. Right. But Walmart uh, didn't do that. They said they would, and they didn't. Um, and so this article points out that they've sort of been dragging their feet even with things that they said they would do. Hmm. Uh, it's a long read, but there's lots of interesting details in here. So, of course, we'll have a link to the story in the show notes. Uh, so do check it out. That is my story this week. Joe, what do you have for us? Dave, we're going back to cookware for me this week. Oh, good. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with Le Creuset? Uh, no, I am not. It is a French cookware, Dave. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it is a very good cookware. Okay. Uh, we have a number of these pots around. It is an, it, like enameled cast iron. Okay, is sure. what it is. And you can you can tell it's Le Creuset because that is embossed in the cast iron up top. Uh, this is good stuff. Okay. It is not cheap, though. Yeah. Um, and there is a young woman. Uh, apparently, she is very famous. Perhaps you have heard of her. Her name is... 
Taylor Swift. Do you know hmm. who that is? Rings a bell. Rings a bell. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's very popular singer or something. I think she's dating a football player. Yeah. Of course, everybody knows who Taylor Swift popular is. Popular with the kids. Yes. <laughs> uh, and the young adults, too. Okay. I mean, sure. Like, sure. Up to like 30-year-old women just... The Gaga for Taylor Swift. They go Gaga for Taylor Swift yeah. and, I guess, Lady Gaga. But, there you go. Um, Even Lady about... Gaga goes Gaga for Taylor Swift. Does she? I don't know. I just made sound. I, I like the pun. Okay. Go on. <laughs> anyway, um, she also likes Le Creuset ah. because uh, she gave it as a gift uh, to a bridal shower of one of her fans she just showed up at. Hmm. Uh, somebody noticed that she has it in her house. Okay. On that are on some post postings. Yeah. Um the uh there's an article in the New York Times that we'll link to that talks about it that says that she is in the past has has indicated that she likes somehow Le Creuset. Okay. Well, somebody decided they were going to build an a fake ad that featured a fake Taylor Swift talking about a Le Creuset giveaway. Oh. It rhymes nicely. I didn't even realize that because I had read and written everything here mm -hmm. and didn't get the French pronunciation rhyming with the English. Anyway, it's a giveaway. And it was, uh, this was deep faked using samples from, from Taylor Swift's voice. Yeah. And then overlaid over a video. And in the New York Times article, there's a picture of the video. And I don't think the video looks like Taylor Swift. Okay. It I, It looks a little weird to me, but maybe it, Maybe it actually... I, I'm not good with faces. Okay. Uh, like I've said before, I can't tell Kurt Russell and, and uh, Patrick Swayze apart. Okay. So, um, anyway, the ad was, hey, I'm giving... There's... Le Creuset is doing this giveaway. Click here and you you can get some free Le Creuset. Now, these are like $250 pots, Dave. All right. And if you click on the ad, you were taken to a page, a web page that said... Help us get these things to you. Shipping is like 10 bucks. Ah. Right? And then you enter credit card information and you never get your, your $250 pot <laughs> mailed to you. Right, of course. Right. There have been another, or a, a number rather, of people who have been impersonated this way, including Selena Gomez. Okay. Who you and I are both big fans of, especially I, from yes. Only Murderers in the Building. Yes. That, I do know who she is. Yep. Um, Oprah Winfrey? Personal friend of mine. Per Oprah Winfrey's a personal friend of yours? Yeah. Okay. We worked together once. Did you? Yeah. She used to live here. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Martha Stewart. Okay. Now, Martha Stewart, that, that's the first name in this list where I would put any credence in what these people said about cookware. <laughs> okay. Right? Like yeah. if Taylor Swift said to me, you know what piano you should buy? I'd be like, tell me, which piano should I buy? Right. There is someone, there's something I give her credence on. Sure. What? Which microphone should you use for singing? Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Or she likes, she also plays guitar. She's multi-talented. Sure. Right? Selena Gomez, if, uh, if, I'd take acting advice from. Yeah. Right? Also uh, a musician in her own right? Uh, yeah. I mean, kind of like a, Produced musician, you know, although, anyway. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, I, I don't know w what I would take as advice from Oprah Winfrey, but mm. certainly not cooking advice. I don't think that Taylor Swift, uh, Oprah Winfrey, or Selena Gomez have made a lot of their own meals <laughs> over the past couple of years. Not lately. No, <laughs> not probably lately. not. Right. Yeah. Uh, Martha Stewart, at least, I would trust that advice anyway. Okay. Um, but I this got me thinking about what do you do to defend yourself against this? Mm. Uh, and... And maybe this is the old curmudgeon, grumpy old Joe kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but don't don't worship these celebrities, any of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> don't be so enthralled with them that when you see an ad for whatever it is they're selling, that you're just like, ooh, this is somebody I like. I wonder what they like. Yeah. You know, if you like anybody, there are people I like, yeah. right? Like, uh, take, for example, uh, Dave Lombardo, one of the best drummers, I think, ever in heavy metal. Okay. I would listen to anything he had to say about drumming. Yeah. Right? I, that would be the end of it. <laughs> if he wanted to tell me about pots and pans, I wouldn't care. But, well, what if, what if there was some crossover with something that he and you both had in common? So let's say he said, you know, I don't know, here's a particular uh, a brand of whiskey or a bottle of wine or, you know, something, something like that. I'll give you the perfect example of that. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Who I enjoy a lot of his movies. Yeah. I think he's very funny. Okay. He has a gin that he is an owner of. Okay. Uh, Aviator Gin. 
right? Never tried it. Okay. You know why? Because it's gin, number one. I don't like gins. <laughs> and you don't like drinking a pine tree? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I actually do like gin, but no, I, I get okay. where you're coming from. Yeah, Have you ever yeah, tried yeah. aviator gin? No. No. Would you try aviator gin because Ryan Reynolds recommended it? No. No. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. I would I wouldn't I wouldn't try it. I'm trying to think of any examples in my life of when a celebrity's uh endorsement has swayed me to purchase anything. And I can't think of anything. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I I'm I've tried to think about this a lot. The only thing I can think of is is exactly the example I gave earlier with musical instruments. Because mm-hmm. uh, I used to read like Guitar Player magazine and all that. And you'd see sure. like, yeah. uh, you know, here's Joe Satriani. What does he play? This is what Kirk Hammett plays. This right. is, uh, you know, here's here's what uh, here's what Kerry King likes to play. I'm mm-hmm. a, and all those things would be uh, Slash. Slash was another guy. He liked Gibson guitars, right? Yeah. Um, so, though, but but those are. That's the the tools of their trade, mm-hmm. right? You know, like my my dad and and actually me, all of us in our family, we all have these mechanical pencils that we love mm-hmm. because my dad was an accountant and and everybody like my kids and and I are either an accountant or an en- or engineers. We all love these mechanical pencils. Okay, so I, I would take our advice over mechanical pencils before I took anybody else's advice over mechanical pencils. And this is now I'm getting really. The point of this just being a silly comparison. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's okay. But uh, I, I, the celebrity worship, you can't, these people are good at what they do. Yeah. Right? Uh, these people are good. Like Oprah Winfrey can bring people together and and put together an entertaining show. Right. Uh, Taylor Swift, a very good performer, beloved by many people. Selena Gomez, a, a pretty good actor, uh, musician, as you mentioned. That's their job. Mm-hmm. Their job isn't whatever celebrity product, whatever product they're endorsing. I, I I just never never caught on with that idea of celebrity endorsements of products. No, but it seems to work. I mean, it's you know it does as, seem to work as, as long as there's been advertising and there's been celebrities. <laughs> right, there have been celebrity uh, endorsements. Yeah, so all the way back to the days of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, I'm Clark Gable, and I really like these cigarettes. Right, right. Nine out of ten doctors recommend Lucky Strikes. <laughs> right. um, yeah. Uh, so it's effective, but I think you're, I mean, your point is a good one that you, right. you shouldn't let your being enamored with a celebrity, uh, short circuit, your critical thinking about any sort of product. Right. Yeah. Now that being said, trust me when I say these pots and pans from La Crusade are very good. I'm not being paid. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Joe Kerrigan's celebrity endorsement. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hacking human stamp of approval. What am I? I might be in fine French celebrity. cookware. Right? That's exactly. <laughs> boy, that is so in our lane. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say if you're going to do that, try it yourself. Um, but uh, the other the other thing I tell you is remember nothing's free. Mm-hmm. Right, you're not going to log onto a website and miraculously get awarded a two hundred fifty dollar item. Right, right. Let alone something that's going to cost you way more than ten dollars to ship to you. These things are heavy. <laughs> they are heavy pots and pans. Yeah, but you know what? It strikes me about this is what's really smart on the scammers' part is that a ten dollar fee, right, is not a lot. Yes, and so. The victim of this, I bet a lot of people were like, you know what? I'll roll the dice. Right. It, you know, it's just, this is probably a scam, but what if it isn't? Right. Then I I'll mean, get Taylor a 250 Swift behind Yeah, it. I'll get it. Well, I'll get a $250 pot for $10. And if not, I'm out 10 bucks. If not, I'm out 10 bucks. Yeah. And also, uh, the odds of them reporting it are very low. Very low. Because it's so a little bit of money. Right. Yeah. So I think there's some deliberate uh, um, and craftiness on the part of the scammers here. I think so. Uh, The article from the New York Times quotes a Dr. Liu from the University of Buffalo saying these AI-generated voices are getting much easier to generate. The AI lip sync is getting much easier to come across and that these things are just going to happen more and more frequently. Yeah. It's, uh, these scams are coming or they're already here, obviously. <laughs> right. Right. But, uh, they're only going to grow in number. Yeah. So you remember the, the Keanu Reeves t-shirt scam, you know, where it's Keanu Reeves holding up something and everybody photoshopped out whatever it was he was holding and put up t-shirts. Uh, no, I don't remember that. But... Oh. Huh. 
I thought we talked about it on this show. Maybe, maybe we didn't. Maybe I'm. Oh well, it's also quite possible that I have a terrible memory. It so. is possible. <laughs> In fact, count on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is that on steroids. Yeah. You know now now they're just making fake videos of popular people. Yeah. Talking about giving giving away expensive bots. That's another annoyance I have with Facebook. By the way. Oh yeah, that's that's you know what, Dave. Very good that you uh, you mentioned that because <laughs> this these ads ran, of course, on all of Meta's platforms. Yeah, and I forgot I glossed over this sentence in the show notes here that we have. But dozens of separate, similar Le Creuset scam ads featuring Taylor Swift, many of them posted this month, were still visible uh, as of late last week on Meta's public ad library. Yeah, so Meta has done nothing about it. Yeah. So there's my jab at, <laughs> at Meta for the week. I, well, the thing I'm thinking of here that is a, an annoyance on Facebook is you will see some sort of wise quote, right? Right. And and, <laughs> and that wise quote will be superimposed over the image of some celebrity. Yeah. And the celebrity didn't say that. Right. It has nothing to do with the celebrity. Well, you know what Just, Abraham Lincoln said, Dave? Don't, <laughs> don't believe anything you read on the internet. <laughs> that's true. I saw that on the internet, so right. I know it's true. <laughs> All right, Joe, it's time to move on to our catch of the day. Dave, our catch of the day comes from me. Uh Uh-oh. This arrived in my (laughs) inbox this week. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And I'm going to let you guess right off the bat how I knew this was a scam. Well, uh, (laughs) because this is a notice about your iCloud account. That's right, Dave. Yeah. (laughs) internationally known Apple device user that you are. (laughs) I don't own any Apple devices. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So, uh, want me to read this? Yes. All right. Well, it starts off, there's there's the iCloud logo at the top of the email. Below that, there's an Apple logo and then a bunch of uh, invoice IDs and dates and things like that. But it says, you've reached your iCloud drive storage limit. Hello, your iCloud storage will soon be full. Apple is giving away 50 gigabytes of storage space for free because the entire available storage space has been exhausted. What does that mean? I don't know. It's It's very tired. It's laying down. It's had a rough day. (laughs) All my storage space is tired of carrying Uh, around all my pictures. Click on the link below to benefit from the offer. Offer valid today only. Ooh, artificial time constraint. Your Apple iCloud team. Get up to 50 gigabytes. Right. Now, when did this come to you, Joe? Last week. Okay. Last week. All right. So, so 2023, copyright 2023. Yes, well, it came in 2024. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> down at the bottom here, it says, uh, to stop these, please go here. Yeah. And the, here is a, a link. Okay. And I didn't click on that link. It didn't even mouse over it to see what it was. But interesting, it also says, or write to this address, which is in Valley Cottage, New York. Okay. Upstate New York. I guess, or Valley, I don't know where Valley College is, but I did look at Google Maps. This address <laughs> and Street View. Is it, is it like, a, like, I want to say it's, I'm, I'm just picturing like a, a lonely rest stop by the side of the road. Or uh, you're not far off. <laughs> okay, you go know, on. You, you know all the, uh, we live in Columbia, you know all the one level uh, industrial commercial spaces we have oh, around yes. here? Oh, yes, brick on block. Yeah. Yes. Brick on block commercial it, office space. Sure. Brick on block. Commercial office space yep. is what it is. One of one of the suites in here is a trampoline place. You yeah. know, like what do they call them around here that they have? I, I don't know. Yeah, so the bouncy houses and bouncy things. houses. Right. Sure. Yep. Uh, one of them is a medical supply company. Okay. I, I don't know which one of these this is. I'm wondering if why this address was even in here. This this might just be me going down a rabbit hole that has no meaning or anything. Right. Highly possible. Yeah. Especially with the way I think about things, but. Um, I was I was fascinated by that. Yeah, that is interesting. I huh. wonder if there's somebody at this le- address that's part of this scam. Right, and what happens if you write them? <laughs> oh, you got us. Boys, right. shut it down. <laughs> right. Maybe I'll write these guys a letter. <laughs> we got a postcard from Joe. <laughs> the, I, the jig is up. Right. <laughs> Maybe I'll do the old Mark Twain thing where I send them a letter and go, they know everything. Run. <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we would love to hear from you. If you have something you'd like us to consider for our catch of the day, you can email us. Again, it's hackinghumans at n2k.com. We were 
talking about mitigating cyber threats to your organization before your users even see them. The new Fish ER Plus from Nobefore was developed to help you supercharge your organization's email security defenses. How? You get a unique crowdsourcing advantage. More than 10 million highly trained Nobefore end users from across the globe catch and report malicious email that makes it through all the filters. Nobefore's Threat Lab then validates it with AI and with human researchers. Fish ER Plus blocks phishing threads other tools have missed and proactively removes them from your users' inboxes. Not quite time travel, but we think you'll agree it's a vital capability in any InfoSec professional's arsenal. Visit nobefore.com slash products slash fish ER dash plus to learn more. That's nobefore.com slash products slash fish ER dash plus. And we thank Nobefore for sponsoring our show. Joe, I recently had the pleasure of speaking with Abhilash Garamella. He is the head of research at Bolster. Uh, And we are talking about a phishing campaign targeting customers of the U.S. Postal Service. Here's our conversation. The holiday season, uh, I mean, so we have usually observed a high volume of phishing and scams that happen during the holiday season throughout. I mean, it's been through 2021 or 2022 or 2023. And we have seen a consistent race through each of these, uh, you know, years and the trend has always been up. And that was the reason we started diving deep into these. Um, so our research has actually stemmed out of a research we worked on prior to this one, which is uh, finding out that a lot of retail brands out there are being impersonated. We uh, identified over hundreds of brands which were which had fishing kits deployed across multiple geographies. And that's what led interest into why we should be delving into the delivery scams, because there, sh- there should always be a second part to the online retail scams, which is if the attackers can't get you with the online fake online retail pages, they do want to get you with these delivery pages. Well, let's talk about the scam itself. I mean, suppose that, that I'm a consumer out there and I'm doing my own thing, minding my own business. How would these folks uh, try to draw me into this scam? Awesome. So, uh, the USPS or, uh, you know, the major delivery scams that we have seen, they usually have three phases of attack. The first one is the setup phase, right? I mean, the attacker either purchases a typo squad domain, which is a common misspelling and tries to they, they try to make it look legitimate. It could be that uh, one of the domains that we observed was an attacker purchased walmarts.co, Walmart with an S at the end, and then they started hosting it on one of the free hosting providers or these freemium SaaS hosting providers. Um, or they could simply start using the Web3. And um, once the attack is actually set up, the second part of the attack is the medium of distribution. Uh, the attack is distributed via your SMS, your messaging service, or the email. Uh, these days, they are also using WhatsApp, Signal, Telegram, uh, you know, anything that they can get their hands on to distribute the attack. Uh, but what usually happens is that the target or the potential victim receives a message that is a fake alerting or a fake alert uh, about a package uh, delivery that failed. The attacker will either state an incorrect address or a missing address as the reason for the package delivery failure. Um, and each of these messages usually comes with a link embedded in them. And this link will redirect the user to the original phishing page. And this phishing page is what we discussed, how they set it up. You know, they can either set it up on a typo squad domain or they, most of these we have also seen use subdomains of freemium SaaS providers. And um, the moment these guys migrated to start using freemium SaaS providers, uh, suppose I sign up on one of these providers and they give me one month of free hosting, I can start doing it at a larger scale. I, just, I can just start creating these fake accounts and start just blasting out into the internet. And the third piece of the attack, of course, is that once as, as a target, if I receive uh, a text message during the holiday season saying that my delivery failed, I am most probably going to go ahead and click on that and take a look at it or at least take a peek at it. Right? And the moment I go there, this web page, uh, what we have seen is a level of sophistication which has increased throughout the years. Uh, in the past, these web pages used to be just static web pages, uh, which used to say, hey, uh, you know what, your delivery failed, why don't you sign in? These days, the attackers have actually built in JavaScript into these web pages, which tries to identify your IP location. 
the moment they get your IP address, they're getting your residential uh, your proximity of your residential location. And so, if say I'm based out of the San Francisco, um, the the delivery scam would say, hey, you know what? Your delivery has been held in a warehouse near San Francisco, and it's been held in this zip code. Uh, you know, in order to retrieve your uh, package, you need to provide us with the following information where they're asking for your delivery address, they're asking for your personal information, your credit card information. And at this point, I mean, if a victim actually goes through with the scam, uh, at that point, the attacker has everything about you. Mm. Well, give us an idea of the scale of these campaigns that you're observing here. So last month, when uh, the moment the, when this research was being published, we found out around 3,000 unique phishing domains that were hosting this scam. And that is just on the race. I think uh, when we last calibrated this a couple of days ago, it was over 6,000 phishing domains that were hosting it. Wow. I mean, I, I really, I, I guess I, I hadn't uh, considered how much more successful a campaign like this can be at the holidays when people have so many things being delivered from so many different places. It's, it's hard to keep track of, and, and I can imagine it makes it that much easier to fool folks. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so at, at this point, it's this is the whole, there is a whole attack cycle to it. Uh, so at this point, there are so many digital landmines for a consumer to purchase anything online and get it delivered successfully. Uh, I mean, attackers will try to target you with the fake ads on Instagram, on Facebook, where they're like, hey, you know what, you get Ray-Ban glasses for 30 bucks or Nike shoes for $15. And if you miss those, I mean, if as a consumer, you're you're savvy enough and, okay, this is fake and I'm not going to go ahead and click on these, they try to get you with these phishing pages, fake online phishing pages, where which give you heavy discounts. If they miss you with the phishing pages, they're trying to get you with these delivery scams. And if they miss you with the delivery scams and you're savvy enough to avoid all this, there are people who are stealing packages off your porches. So it's 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 sort of these all these digital landmines that have been built around. It's really... Dif becoming difficult for a consumer to navigate through. Yeah. What are your recommendations? I mean, how, how should folks best protect themselves here? The best way to do it is, uh, it, as a consumer, there are, there are two ways I would uh, usually suggest protection. One of them is the consumer itself, and the other one is from a brand perspective. As a consumer, uh, uh, I mean, two parts, right? So if I see a heavy discounted retail store, then I not go click on it or if I see a free gift card that is floating out there I do not go ahead and enter my details into it because most of the time they come out to be fake and with the delivery scams themselves I would suggest the attackers take a notice at what domain they are entering their details on usps.com is the only known or identified domain that usps actually uses to deliver packages inside the US and um, I mean if you're seeing something uh, Maybe you're uh, saying walmarts.co, which has a USPS page, or if say uh, USPSS.com, where the attackers are trying to confuse the targets with common misspellings. That is something we need to be care that the consumers need to be careful about. Hmm. I, are there any systems that, that folks can use, any automation that they can take advantage of? Uh, is, is, this the kind of, is this the kind of problem that if somebody's really concerned about it, that they could throw a little bit of money at? Oh, absolutely. I think from a, they, they need not actually throw money at it. From a consumer perspective, there are multiple tools which could do it for free. Uh, for example, we have uh, Bolster actually has a freemium uh, free community model, which is called checkfish.ai. If you have a suspicious link, you can just go scan it in there to see whether that's a legitimate site or if that is a fake website. Right. If you see USPSS.com and you're like, um, is this a real package or is that a phishing page? You just scan it in there and we're going to tell you for free whether that is a, a phishing page or not. But from when it comes from a brand perspective, as a brand, if you're trying to protect your consumers, you know, as USPS or as the Nikes and Adidas of, or Super Drives of the world, if you're trying to protect your consumers, then definitely we would, they would either need to build automation to start protecting these or go work with a vendor who has the ability to protect. Joe, what do you think? Constant increase in these phishing campaigns, mm. year over year for the past three years. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting. Impersonation is key to these scams. Yeah, uh, as Abalash says, Abalash gives a good breakdown of the process here. First, they register a domain, then they send out messages. 
and then they get the money. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's it's the typical scam we hear about a lot. He, he talks about the domain squatting, the typo squatting. We're using these um, these freemium sites that offer one free month. Uh, this is a similar business model. A lot of sites offer this, but it really enables these scammers to get a month of free scamming. Mm-hmm. You know, at little to no cost. Yeah. Uh, probably they use a stolen credit card. Mm. It may not even be valid, right? Right. Right. Um, it just has to pass whatever algorithmic check the software has in it. Sure. Um, Abalash talks about the uh, the methods of delivery of these scam text messages. Some of them being com- some of them have been started coming in on Signal and on Telegram. Um, I got to tell you, Dave, if I got messages from any government agency on Signal or Telegram, I'd be very suspicious. <laughs> Even one as benign as the U.S. Postal Service. Right? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm actually a big fan of the postal service They're, I think they do a good job. Yeah. Um, and, but if they, but if they sent me a text message on, on signal, I'd be like, wait a minute. That doesn't make, <laughs> first off, that doesn't make sense. Right. Second off, I don't know that I want my government sending me messages on signal. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. I want that. Yeah. There's a pretty good observation about how these phishing pages have gotten so advanced that they now have JavaScript on the back end that resolve your IP address and do a a, a geo lookup. Uh-huh. And then they start making the next page of the scam on the website more applicable to you mm-hmm. by knowing your geography or at least having a good chance of knowing your geography. Right. There's a good chance that that the information they get is wrong, right? Like if you're using a VPN and you're coming out of Seattle and you live in Maryland and they say it's... Um, you know, we have a we have this package at the Tacoma warehouse. Right. Right. Uh, you're like, Tacoma, Washington? That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Why are you telling me about this? But right. if you're not doing that, it's fairly trivial and accurate a lot of the time so that it lends credence to this. Sure. To this scam. Online shopping is a gold mine for these. And and Abilash points that out. We have the, you know, they first they try to get you with the fake sites. If they can't get you with the fake sites, they get you with a missed delivery scam. And finally, if they can't get you with that, they just steal whatever it is off your porch. Right? <laughs> there, there's there's opportunity for crime all the way in the uh, in every step of the way of this process. <laughs> right. You know. Right. Uh, fortunately for me, it works almost every time. I I, I don't know that I've ever had anything wind up uh, being stolen off my porch. Yeah. But I have had. Google malicious Google ads redirect me. I've talked about that on the show. Redirect me to the wrong site mm. uh, and victimize me that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hate. God, I'm still angry about that, Dave. <laughs> I'm still angry and embarrassed about it. But, <laughs> you know, I I I tell people, thank you for telling your story. So I'm going to tell my story too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that there are sites that you can scan the URL. Bolster has one. Virus Total has one. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a number of them out there. I think you mentioned one one time that was uh, like a complete uh, URL detonation service. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't remember which one that I was. I can't remember but there, either. But there are lots of those things out there. And there, and are. Good, there are good ones you can use. Yep. So, yeah. you know, go ahead and use one of them. Uh, it, and if you are a business, take protection of your customers seriously and your customers' data seriously. Mm. Uh, you know, make sure your customers know the communication channels you're going to send send across. Make sure they're clear that you're not going to send them a message on Signal or Telegram. Uh, or you're not going to, you're only going to send an email via, uh, to, or to an, a specific email address. I will say this, Dave. Recently, I've been getting delivery confirmation emails from UPS when I order something from Amazon. Okay. And they're accurate. They're not saying your your shipment's been delayed. They're saying your shipment will be there tomorrow. Okay. Here's the tracking number. All right. And I'm like, well, that's my order. And But how did UPS get my email address? I guess Amazon gave it to them? Sure. Uh, so, but I don't know. That's kind of an unexpected communication channel for me. Mm. So I'm immediately suspicious of it. Yeah. Uh, so if I got if I got one of those emails, even if it was legitimate, from UPS going, we can't deliver this, I'd be like, oh, this is a scam. Yeah. But I don't know that UPS does that. And in, in fact, if they do do that, then what happens is it just goes back to Amazon and I take it up with Amazon. That's yeah. the process. Right, right. All right. Well, our thanks to Abhilash Garamella for joining us. Again, he is the head of research at Bolster and we do appreciate him taking the time. We 
want to thank all of you for listening, and of course, we want to thank our sponsors at Know Before. They are experts in helping users do the right thing through new school security awareness training. That is our show. We want to thank all of you for listening. A quick reminder that N2K Strategic Workforce Intelligence optimizes the value of your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your team while making your team smarter. Learn more at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producers are Jennifer Iben and Brandon Karp. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie. I'm Dave Bittner. And I'm Joe Kerrigan. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.